Hello and welcome back to another episode on the Ken Oe channel. And today we'll be activating our Z power with the Pokemon Z ring, which comes with the Mimikyu Z crystals. And of course, they provide you with a mini Mimikyu as well. I still don't know why they call this the Z ring. I mean, the only person that could wear this as a ring is probably the Hulk. So I'm gonna call it a bracelet, which it clearly is. It's even written in the box. Super Bracelet Z. This is an updated version of the Pokemon Z ring slash bracelet toy released last year and this toy's release coincides with the release of the latest Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon game and this toy has a few conditions for it to work so without further ado let's start with the box. A clear plastic screen at the front showing off the bracelet and the crystals with Mimikyu parading at the front. At the back of the box you have a picture of how cool you can look if you wear the bracelet which I'm beginning to think I'm too old for this shit. Wow, the kid really grew up fast, didn't he? Before we talk about the bracelet, let's talk about the mini Mimikyu toy. And the paint job is not too bad, except for my figure, you can see the obvious paint drip there, which is a shame, but overall he does look creepily cute. Oh no, two Pikachus? I really can't tell which is the real Pikachu. This is just too hard. Ah, oh, which one is the real Pikachu? Pikachu? And here you have the Super Bracelet Z, and so far the outlook is the same as the previous model, and speaking of the previous model, putting them side by side, they're both similar from the side and back, both have the strap for kids who have smaller wrists, but it can fit an adult's wrist as well, as you can see from the thumbnail, and the biggest change in its outlook apart from the colour scheme is on its face. So let's explore that. They use the clip system to clip the crystals instead of using the peg system from the previous model, which means that the new crystals cannot be used in the older model, as it would require a hole to be packed into the older model which the newer crystals does not have. What? But thankfully, the old model's crystals can be used in the newer model which makes the older model obsolete. I'm old, not obsolete. The only use I have for this older model now is that it serves as my crystal storage and since the newer model uses the clip systems, there's the absence of the crystal shaped indent but I still like the prominence of the Z sign on the older model which is not present in the newer model. But the reason they took the indent out is because they've added an additional feature where you can activate the new crystals by turning it around which you can't do if you had the crystals indent but obviously you can't rotate it whenever you have the older crystals attached which is also evident in the crystals design as you can see from the back the new crystals have this circular shaped hole carved to allow the rotation to happen whereas the older crystals just have the three holes for the pegs and I wouldn't recommend you trying to rotate it unless you want to break it. You have this shape protruded at the bottom with an insignia molded which also lights up when you activate the Pokemon specific crystals, more on that later. The FX button is also placed on the side of the newer model as opposed to at the bottom and the biggest difference between the two? The presence of an on and off switch on the newer model. <laughs> FINALLY! Until this day, I have no way of turning the older model off apart from letting the battery die. And once the battery is low, it doesn't tell you. The only indication you get when it's low on battery is when you actually press the FX button and you'll be greeted by this sweet sound. Ayo, make it stop! Yes, it happened to me before and I thought it was broken which is why I made this video earlier but a lot of people mentioned in the comment section that it's just because of the batteries and once I swapped them with new batteries, it stopped making my ears bleed but after this review, I'm going to take the batteries out from this model just in case it decides to go crazy on me again and also the new device apparently glows red if the batteries are low. Why didn't we have this feature in the older model instead of being greeted with this? I'm still a little bit concerned about the on-off button as turning on looks like the entire device is about to be electrocuted, which may worry some users. I'm guessing from looking at this picture that this at the back is actually the infrared system, which you can pair it if you have the arcade system in your local arcade, which I'm pretty sure it's only available in Japan. So another obsolete function. So just like the previous model, this one comes in three different modes which can toggle using this button at the top. So starting by leaving it in the middle which leaves it at standby mode, which just means it deactivates all other functions like the motion sensors, picking up cue sounds from the 3DS, and putting in the crystals won't activate anything but you can still get it to make the sounds if you press on the FX button. And the difference is that for standby mode, no matter what crystals you put in, it'll just activate a rainbow colored lighting effect as opposed to lighting specifically to the Z crystals attributes, which I'll show more later, but that's pretty much it for standby mode. 
Pushing it to 1 activates the 3DS mode, but it's going to be another lengthy portion showcasing every feature of the 3DS mode in relation to the game, so I'll be doing that in my next video. But in this mode, you can activate crystals and it can be activated via 3DS as well. And switching it to 2 turns on the role playing mode, which has pretty much the exact same functions as the 3DS mode. The motion sensors are activated, except for the 3DS activation. Sound and lighting. So leaving it in the role playing mode, starting with the normal Z crystals, just align the pegs to the holes and clip it to activate the sounds. It's pretty much the same lighting and sound effect with the previous model. As mentioned earlier, it lights up specifically to the Z crystal's attributes. For example, activating the fire crystal will have red lighting effects and blue for water and so on. And putting a Pokemon specific crystal simply activates a rainbow colored lighting effect. Also to note the insignia doesn't light up unless it's the new crystals being activated which I'll show next. For the new crystals, when you put in the crystal in this position, it'll glow three times as if to say, you're ready to transform. Transform and roll out! So to activate the crystal, simply rotate clockwise like so and the magic happens. As you can see, the insignia also lights up for this crystal and pressing the FX button simply brings back the rainbow lighting effect with its specific sounds and you can take it off and put it on without rotating. The rotating feature is just an addition to the experience of being a Pokemon trainer. Also to note, if you are confused to which side of the crystal to put it in, there's the triangle shaped mole on this side as indication so when it's unrotated, the triangle needs to be pointed upwards and when it's rotated, it needs to be pointed to the right. And of course, motion sensor is active in this mode as well, so swinging it around also activates the light and sounds. I'm still a little bit concerned about how much it will shake the mechanics inside, but only time will tell. <sighs> I'm out of breath talking about this toy. So, in summary, this is still a great toy with plenty of functions attached, however, this toy is highly conditional as you'd have to have either one of the Pokemon games associated with this bracelet, preferably the two latest Pokemon games to unlock its additional features, which is only associated with Ultra Sun or Moon, and even if you have the games, if you want to use the Pokemon specific Z crystals like the Mimikyum Z, you have to have the specific Pokemon and their specific moves and crystals in-game to activate their unique sounds. And even if you want to activate the typical Z crystals, you'd have to get the older ones which you can still hunt down from Toys R Us or EV Games if you are living in Australia. And on top of that, you have the infrared system which you can only use in Japan unless someone decides to bring the arcade system to international markets, which I highly doubt it. So taking away all of that, judging this toy on its own without considering all of that, this is just an okay toy to have. For the price you're paying, the most you could do is the role playing mode and with only two crystals, you're not enjoying the most out of this toy, but at least they give you a mini Mimikyu as compensation. However, if you do have all of the things above, then this becomes a really fun toy to have. By its own, I can see this toy being useful or fun if you happen to be a cosplayer as I believe they'll enjoy having this as the finishing touch to their Pokemon trainer costume design. That concludes today's episode, stay tuned for episode 2 where I'll be featuring this toy's function in relation to the 3DS. I wanted to compile it all together in one video but unfortunately that will make an extremely long video and there's just a lot to talk about when it comes to this device which is why I apologize if this video was too long but I don't see how I could make it any shorter without compromising the information needed to be shared. So if this video wasn't funny I still hope it was at least informative and I apologize as well if I happen to make mistakes along the way. You are more than welcome to correct me in the comment section down below so it will help future buyers who is interested in this toy stay informed and that is why we have this amazing Amazing toy community. Thank you guys very much for watching and if you watched all the way till the end, I applaud your patience and tenacity. I really appreciate it. Do leave a like if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe for more content about toys and more. I'll be doing an updated version of the activated Z crystals once I got all the crystals which should be coming in December but stay tuned as I'll be receiving the Japanese version of this toy and I'll also be talking about the crystal packs as well which I got a few thoughts on that as well and it's not positive. <sighs> Thank you guys very much for watching and as always, I hope you guys are embracing your inner Z power and having a great week. And I'll see you guys at the next video. Click here to enjoy more videos.